If you look at a topographic map of South Dakota, one thing you might immediately notice is this pointed region over here that is of higher elevation than all of the land surrounding it. This region is known as the Coteau de Prairie, which from French translates to the Prairie Highlands, and it has a very interesting geologic history. So this region spans all the way from its very tip in North Dakota, mainly through South Dakota, and then partially into Minnesota and Northwest Iowa. And one thing you might immediately notice about this region is all of the lakes here. And these are glacial lakes formed in between the till that has been deposited from glaciers. A way to immediately tell that lakes are glacial is that they will probably be very circular. And many of these circular lakes are known as kettle lakes and are formed when giant chunks of ice create a depression on the landscape. Another interesting fact about these glacial lakes is that they are very salty. And this is because these lakes are endorheic, which means that the only way for them to lose water is by evaporation. And so rainwater will gather salt from the nearby sediment, and then water will evaporate, leaving the lakes to be very salty. But something strange about these lakes is that they are restricted to this plateau area, even though glaciers during previous glacial maximums went far beyond this area. So how are the lakes just in this area alone? Well, it is all because of how the final glaciation in this region occurred. This last glaciation in North America occurred around 100,000 to 11,000 years ago, and it was known as the Wisconsin Glaciation. So at this time, the Laurentide Ice Sheet was still traveling south through North America, but once it got to this Coteau region, it actually split into two different lobes. One lobe, named the James Lobe here, flowed roughly south-southwest and forms a huge valley that the modern-day James River sits in. The other lobe, known as the Des Moines Lobe, went southeast and today forms a huge valley that the Minnesota River sits in. And these two lobes form different watersheds, even though both eventually flow into the Atlantic. The James Lobe flows into the Missouri River, but the Des Moines Lobe flows into the Mississippi River. But as these two lobes were traveling through this landscape, it left behind the pointed shape of the Coteau that we see today. And it also left behind a lot of till on this landscape. You know how a snow plow, as it's plowing snow, leaves the snow to the side of it, basically. Well, imagine that snowplow is an around 1,600 foot thick glacier that is slowly moving through the landscape and exerting around 45 tons of pressure per square inch it travels on. That is going to deposit a lot of till to the side of it. So much so that along with the previous glaciations, the Coteau de Prairie has sediments that are around 900 feet thick. And as I mentioned previously, as these glaciers were retreating around 10,000 years ago, large chunks of ice would break off of them and fall on the Coteau area. And these ice chunks would leave a depression in the landscape and melt into the endorheic lakes that we see today. Because the Coteau region was untouched by the last glaciation, it has left behind a different geology than the surrounding area. For example, the pipestone in this area, where large amounts of catlinite, also known as pipestone, were brought south as giant boulders from the previous glaciations. And I just find it very interesting how the glaciers split in this region and essentially left an island surrounded by ice, which allows us to look back to the previous glaciations and see how they might have affected our landscape. But that is going to be all for today's video. If you would like to see more videos about glaciers, then leave a comment below. And if I taught you something new, please subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.